something that we never touched on that I've been wanting to ask you about was there's a video of you at the uh, West Coast Peace Conference where you're, you know, you're, you're talking to Snoop. You kind of, it kind of looks like you finesse your way in. You know what I'm saying? You tell him like, oh yeah, yeah, game. That's, you know, I'm cool with him. And you know what I'm saying? Kind of get up, get in there, man. Can you kind of break down what was going on in that video? Yeah, what actually took place that day. Shout out to my solo. I think his name is also Franklin on GTA. He's become a, like a superstar via the character on Grand Theft Auto. He's been a part of that franchise for quite some years, but that happens to be my homeboy from Ilema East Coast, who is also notoriously known for the encounter with Ice Cube or the W chain was displaced or whatever. He's also a brother of the legendary producer, Wino from 190 East Coast, who did a lot of Coolio's work and also helped me um, experience my introduction to the actual industry on an independent level with a lot of not 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 uh, notable artists like Trey D, Sebo, Yuck Mouth, Jail Felony. I could go on, uh, Drace to the Gangster that I was exposed to, uh, Trey D throughout um, with the, the homie uh, Wino. Him and Solo happened to be brothers. And what just so happened was I was signed at that G unit. I was signed to G unit at that time. It had not been um, that long that I had been signed. And I guess Solo had just left that event. And when he was leaving that event that had been taking place for quite some time, he called me and asked me why I wasn't there. And he became aware that I was totally unaware that that event was even taking place. And he was telling me like, cuz, what, did nobody tell you? He was like, cuz, the whole West Coast is having a peace conference up at the Woody Whoop Hotel. He said it started at such and such time, which was like 1 p.m. When he called me, it was like 2 p.m. He was like, they still up there, cuz. So myself and my cameraman we shot up there and so the footage you seen that's the knowledge i had it was at the uh, universal sheraton if you're familiar with the landscape of how that's set up and there's footage of me uh, bumping into the security guard i think he was a long beach crip that was holding the door down and he kind of questioned me about game and all that in the internet comments it seemed like people were so proud of his line of questioning um even though he didn't impede my intentions of getting through the door, which that's all I was interested in doing. However, when I got through the door, um, I made the opportunity to approach Snoop Dogg about a bit of music that I had recorded when I was affiliated with Suge Knight that I just considered personally would be something that I should uh, address because um, I allowed myself to be manipulated to not only diss Snoop Dogg, but say things derogatory toward his mother, a uh, black queen that not only did I not know, but I had no right to speak derogatory of, but just uh, the pressure of being in the studio with Suge at the moment and him suggesting it, um, I went along with it. And when I encountered being signed by G-Unit, I just naturally was inclined to say, damn, I know they DPG unit, both sides speak highly of each other. I felt like the opportunity might come where that would become a conflict of interest. So I felt like as a man, as a loke, as a crip, I owed it to Snoop to approach him about that and attempt to uh, bury the hatchet. I wasn't even sure because of the level Suge Knight was in the game. I wasn't even 100% sure that Sh Snoop was even aware of the music. Now I look back, I, I can see, I'm, I'm sure he was. But back then I was thinking that he was so big and that the, the, the soundtrack was so small that he may have never even heard it. So when I approached him that day at the conference, I was just trying to go out my way to apologize to him for speaking disrespectful upon his beautiful mother and let him know I didn't have no cause at all and just let him know how I felt under the influence of the environment in the moment and just hoping that he would find it in his heart to forgive me. And he seemingly was readily forgiving at the moment. You know, you can see the exchange we had. It seemed sincere. He told me it wasn't nothing. He advised me just keep it crippling from that point forward. And then we had a number of positive interactions after that. Okay, okay, hold, hold on, hold on one second. So when you go to this conference, were was Game still in G Unit at the time, or did Game leave and was there any issues going on? No, Game was still G Unit. Um, however, I can recall 
not only game, but Snoop also addressing the crowd with advice that was just generally derogatory toward the East Coast in their appeal for us as West Coast. Not us, because I wasn't included. I just popped up. But in their appeal for the West Coast to unite, there was a lot of general um, conversation about negativity toward the East Coast. And I'll just say that. And but I believe game was still G unit. And if you've seen the footage, you see that how I stood close to the stage and mad dog game until he acknowledged me. And he kept walking with the mic, crossing my energy until he finally was like, Spadaloke, I see you over there. So there was a still a, I believe he was, yeah, he was still on G unit. I can't quite place this kind of a blur, but I believe, yeah, he was still on G unit. Okay, and now you and Snoop. You guys squash things, and then game leaves G-Unit, and the beefing starts. Now, how does how does this affect everything with you and Snoop? And, you know, did 50 ever ask you not to get involved in the beef? He most definitely did. And, you know, I didn't leave him a lot of time to ask him that uh, uh, multiple times. He may have mentioned it more than once. However, game was going so hard with the G unit disrespect. And uh, he was pushing the G U not. And me and my peoples was doing this so hard. There is nobody that can stop me from responding initially. I mean, eventually. He initially was doing diss records, trying to diss the whole G unit camp. And in the same record, he was sent positive messages toward me i tried to accept that but with my mentality that's like i'm from east side east coast traditionally historically how do i hear you this to set because you got a problem with the homie a personal problem but all i'm gonna do is keep hearing you just to set so that's the general mind frame that kicked in you can't keep excluding me but you dissing the set we pushing this and we here local so that's what motivated my involvement. At the same time, I came into the camp where 50 Cent was continuously, constantly, consistently complaining about a lack of loyalty on Doja's behalf. So with everything else I brought to the table naturally, of course, I was going to put a real stamp on my natural brand of loyalty. So all that played in at the same time. Okay, and... So when this happens, you know, Snoop and Game are, are really tight at this point. You know, I, I, I've seen some stuff on the internet. Unbeknownst to me, they were that tight because the, the moment came where he did an interview. I believe it was, I can't say it was Ghazi. I forget who West Coast Riders was before they became Empire, who was the key players. It's another name. But one of these cats was interviewing, I think his name was Nemo, 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 or something like that. He was interviewing Don't Snoop, in. and he asked him about the aftermath of that conference. Almost seemed like a setup question, because Snoop, because he was like, you know, how's, how, how's the thing since your conference, Snoop? And Snoop kind of responded like, oh, everything's been good. And then the dude was like, because Sparta Loke was there, and he need, immediately Snoop responded like, man, that nigga and that bullshit. All right, you know, game my homeboy. Uh, Sparta Loke ain't sold no records. Need to be cool with everybody. Everything come through me out here on the West Coast. It's just like that. G Unit can't save you, cuz. Game, my homeboy. Sparta need to be cool with everybody. He ain't need to be dissing nobody. So, this is how me and Snoop went from me humbly approaching him about what I had done in the past and us squashing it and us having multiple positive interactions, even direct phone calls. We had each other's number bumped into each other multiple times in public. Everything was kosher until I looked up on the internet and he had that exchange about me and game. Then he went on to do a Don King impersonation and try to like uh, promote or instigate one of these celebrity boxing matches that we see coming. Now, he was the first one to bring that up with me and game name way back then. And um, it's crazy you brought that up because since then, I've been on a hiatus of seven years, come back in the game, 
And when I came back after the seven years, I definitely assumed that all that transpired was, you know, under the bridge. And I've made multiple attempts to reach out to Snoop Dogg and rekindle a connection that we had on some crypt shit. What people don't realize, even after that peace conference, he and I shared the stage at the um, Video Game Awards, um, exchanged pleasantries very casually, cordially. So I just figured when I came off my hiatus that it would be a possible way to um, pick up where we left off or to repair or mend whatever positive connection we ever had. But I experienced um, difficulty. I, I, you know, I went through a lot of trustful, reliable sources and could never get any type of pos positive feedback from him. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.